Hello, welcome back. Today in this uh, video, we will understand what is OLTP, what is OLTP, and what is the difference between them, and uh, which among them is best suited for a given scenarios. So let's get started. Before that, if you are in a learning path about data and uh, haven't yet subscribed for this channel, please uh, do subscribe and also don't uh, forget to press bell button for instant notifications. So let's get started. So let us first understand uh, by, by definition what is OLTP that is online transaction processing. So OLTP is nothing but it is a system uh, which actually captures or maintains the transaction in the database. So you need to you need to uh, note that this is important. So where it is st storing is it is storing the data in the database. What kind of data it is storing? It is storing the transactions data. That means it captures the data in the real time and also maintains it in the database. And also if you want to see the rows, right? So here the rows are inserted, updated and also deleted. So if you see the, all this can happen at a given time, like parallelly, okay? And uh, the data frequency is very high here. That means uh, it is a, a very real time or at least a near real time. So wherever that use case kind of things are there. So in that case, uh, OLTP is a uh, best thing that we can use. So that's why here uh, the data frequency will be very high. It is a real time data, which is coming to the database and getting the, getting the data updated. And uh, as you know, like there are in database, we call something as asset uh, uh, transactions. Basically that means uh, uh, automaticity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So these, uh, systems actually uh, OLTP systems uh, will uh, use the system use the databases which actually supports uh, asset transaction uh, kind of thing so to maintain the data integrity here uh, OLTP is in, in in case of OLTP so the data integrity will matter a lot because it is a customer uh, end user or customer facing uh, in most of the cases and uh, for example uh, so any banking transaction you do right so there will be a debit credit transactions will be happening so those kind of things uh, uh, will be called as a transaction so your account is amount is getting deb debited uh, credited based on the transactions so that is a typical example uh, or a simple example uh, or also you can take online shopping so when you're uh, placing a kind of a request or an order for any kind of a product so that will uh, go into a trans uh, go into a database in the back end and store that uh, details so that is a more of uh, online shopping uh, example so let's go this is a basic i mean the def by definition what is oltp right so similarly we'll understand what is olap okay so in case of olap what happens is uh, so here uh, we have a tool or a OLAP is nothing but it's a tool or a service okay which which provides analysis ca capabilities so here two things can happen uh, one is analysis or analytics so there is a slight difference but uh, generally we are calling it as a analysis capabilities here so basically you want to analyze the data basically just not storing the data or uh, like just like a transaction is coming and you're storing in database but you you actually read the data and you want to perform some kind of analytics uh, on top of that okay data from multiple OLTP systems. So we, we, saw, we have seen OLTP systems, right? So here OLAP will get the data from the OLTP systems, mostly uh, from the multiple OLTP systems and uh, that data it will use for this analysis. And uh, this will be typically data warehouse or, uh, or any tool based, right? So as you saw previously, it was a database. So that's why I was telling, please note that. So here it is uh, typically data warehouse or uh, it can be a data lake also in, in uh, nowadays scenarios, yeah. And uh, example you can take is online shopping cart. Uh, online shopping company might want to compare sale of a mobile phone of a current or a previous quarter, right? So they want to perform some analytics to compare uh, some kind of uh, sales uh, stats statistics. So in that case, they can, they will use the data from the OLTP system, bring that to OLAP, and then perform the analysis. They will write some queries or uh, they will have some programming there so to actually give the uh, stats uh, that they need or, or that the business needs. So with this is a two simple definition now we were talking about OLTP and OLAP. So let's go into like a little more details now. Okay. So now we will see what is OLTP and OLAP life cycle. That means uh, how actually these two are connected and uh, how actually these work, right? So yeah, so if you see now uh, pretty much uh, like there are, this is OLTP, okay. And this is OLAP. So in case of OLTP, you can see that it is a uh, usually a transactional database in case of OLAP it will be an analytical DB or a data warehouse or a data lake also okay 
and uh, as you see OLTP is getting the continuously it is getting uh, the transactions uh, from the applications or devices any kind of systems so it is getting continuously okay if you see here the heartbeat so it is continuous right so that's how it gets the data OLTP gets the data and then what happens is uh, uh, after that OLAP what it does is it gets the data from all these OLTPs into its location right so as you can see here the frequency of this uh, these arrows are very less because these will be like typically they will be scheduled to run on a daily daily ones or like weekly ones some uh, those kind of scenarios so the data will not flow to OLAP in real time okay so that is the that is the difference actually okay and there might be cases where you write back uh, some of the data to OLAP okay you, you perform analytics and you want to store the data uh, back to the OLTP so this is some rare scenarios but this is also I mean uh, in industry or in, in, uh, in organization they, they do this because OLTP is just for a kind of a processing they will use but again if you want to st store something in, in uh, back to the uh, transaction processing systems they, they do this okay like a master data take take example of master data right you are creating the uh, I mean you are performing analytics and you are generating some kind of master data so that master data these applications can use so in that case you will just write it back to the OLTP systems and as you can see here the data so OLTP uh, usually will have the data it's just like a raw data right and once it flows to OLTP that become a information okay because uh, here we have uh, analytics or analysis uh, on top of the data and we usually uh, create a reports or dashboards on top of that right so that's a that's a life cycle how the data flows uh, between OLTP and OLAP it is a communication or a hands handshake that happens uh, in real time okay let's move to the next one quickly uh, where we will see what is the difference so this is a very interesting topic right so we want to understand how uh, these two are how, how these two differ actually in a uh, couple of parameters we take here right so these are the parameters and uh, for each of these parameters how OLTP and OLAP uh, make a difference okay so source source is nothing but from where you're getting the data okay in case of OLTP you're getting the data from uh, different applications maybe you are having a online online uh, online cart or a banking uh, transaction application uh, or it may be system like any server is there and uh, that is generating some logs or some uh, kind of data right and it might be like some kind of IOT devices or sensor devices okay which uh, continuously produce the data so this is basically source for OLTP for OLAP so the data which comes from uh, different OLTPs so there might be hundreds of OLTP OLTPs so all the data will uh, will be captured in OLAP for its uh, analysis and uh, the frequency right how frequently the data will flow, flow to the systems here it is a real time because uh, end users are performing the transactions in a real-time basis here it will be scheduled so scheduled means uh, we are not getting whenever the data comes to this OLTP system we will not immediately bring to this because there is no need of doing it okay because this is just for analysis right so we can usually schedule this uh, like a weekly once or daily once kind of thing so here we will concentrate more on the analysis not actually on the real time getting the real-time data okay and what is the technology landscape that we use right so here uh, in case of OLTP we use a traditional uh, database systems RDBMS and in case of uh, OLAP we will use uh, data warehouse or uh, some, sometimes we, we, we use a data lake also because of the huge volume uh, nowadays and uh, data volume right so data volume in case of OLTP system it will be very less or in some some cases it might be uh, medium okay because here we are using, uh, please note here we are using database. So data, database systems are not meant for storing the large amount of data. Okay. In that case, if the data volume is a huge, right? Uh, so these are not uh, best solutions. OLTP are not solution, good, good solutions. So then uh, definitely we have to go to the OLAP systems where uh, the data will be moved uh, to the OLAP systems. So here usually, uh, say for example, uh, only last one year of data you will store, right? Uh, and uh, you can move the entire history data to the OLAP systems so OLAP will need all the history data because it is it is uh, performing a lot of analysis based on the history it might be, it might be uh, writing some machine learning or predictive analysis kind of scenarios where it needs a good amount of data to perform its uh, uh, analysis so here the uh, you, you here the full full uh, data will be there like 10 years 20 years data will be there but here they won't store uh, entire like 10 years 20 years data because database system are costlier uh, in, in terms of uh, storing large amount of data and also since it is a transaction systems so it will affect the latency if the data volume volume grows basically yeah and uh, coming to the data normalization how uh, normalized the data will be there uh, in the OLTP definitely it will be normalized because it is a traditional RDBMS uh, it is having all kind of uh, uh, logical uh, what you say um, uh, 
uh, mapping of uh, tables will be there so that's the reason uh, here data normalization will be uh, very high so you can you can see the normalized data but in case of OLAP you just bring the data and dump it from multiple uh, OLTP systems so there there is no need of uh, having a good normalization and operations uh, so when we talk about OLTP systems there will there will be a both read and write operations uh, frequently happening both okay because uh, you, you can read a customer amount okay the balance and again when there is a debit you can uh, reduce that amount and write it back to the his balance uh, actually right so both are happening parallelly but here in OLAP system write are very rare because there is no need of writing here so I would say there is no writes only in some types uh, in rare scenarios we can do it but uh, it will be like only reads okay just you are reading the reading the data which comes from the OLTP systems and then you are writing uh, algorithms or queries on top of that and what is the purpose of OLTP okay so purpose is like business operations to keep it simple right so on to, uh, to keep to keep a uh, day-to-day business operations uh, you are keeping the systems okay because these are like these all application system devices are generating the information so to have that business uh, operations so you are storing this data in the OLTP and in case of OLAP, uh, the analytics, uh, this is mainly for analytics for KPIs. Uh, KPIs are nothing but, uh, so there are key performance indicators. So maybe like, uh, uh, what is the, like as, as you mentioned the example, right? So they want to compare the sales uh, from the previous quarter to this quarter. Okay. Or they want to see how their competitors are doing uh, compare it, compared to the sales of uh, uh, last year. So those kind of anal analytics or anal analysis would be, uh, we call it as a KPIs. So that kind of... Uh, that's the purpose of using OLAP and who are end, end customers so end customers uh, end users are uh, definitely end customers here this is a customer facing usually and OLAPs are uh, more for the business analyst data analyst or uh, executives like finance executives or uh, sales or marketing executives right uh, so those those kind of people use for uh, the decision making for based on these KPIs so this is the very comprehensive uh, difference between OLTP and uh, OLAP systems there are a lot of difference but uh, that is being compiled here uh, to make it uh, simple and we have considered only the key comparisons here hope uh, this is this is uh, uh, hope this was uh, useful and understandable and let's go to the next slide here now uh, the final uh, conclusion right so people a lot of people think that OLTP is better OLAP is better let us see which is better okay so definitely uh, there is no competition between uh, OLTP and OLAP systems but uh, when there was a uh, beginning right so OL, OL, uh, like uh, very few years back like 20, 20 to 20, 25 years back uh, there were no OLAP systems that means there were there but uh, very uh, rarely used I would say but OLTP systems were uh, always there like uh, when they when the when the database uh, we, we started using the database concept right so then uh, OLTP systems were always there but uh, once the data volume started growing and business uh, business use cases or uh, they want to analyze the data those kind of requirement it st requirements start gr started growing OLAP has come in so then people thought uh, OLAP is, has come to replace the OLTP which is actually not correct uh, OLAP and OLTP are having their uh, own uh, use cases their own uh, part basically as we see in the life cycle right so OLAP OL, OLTP life cycle both are present and both are doing their uh, own part okay own job basically so let us see when OLTP should be used and one when OL, OLAP, uh, OLAP should be used so this is based on the scenarios I mean use cases right so you need to answer a few questions right like uh, are you having a day-to-day -day scenario or a day-to-day -day transactions uh, on, on a regular basis that's happening need to be captured right so then OLTP is the best solution and also when you are having application or system that needs a backend okay uh, there are both read and write that very frequently you want to read and write so that is another case and data integrity to be maintained so when when you, you see there is a need of data integrity to be maintained very strongly okay so in that case you need this and uh, volume of data is very less in case of OLTP because uh, uh, if the data volume is growing we will purge or archive that to the OLAP systems as we seen right and uh, compared to OLAP this is a less, less investment because uh, we, we just use the database here but of the uh, less configurations compared to the OLAP systems and there is no uh, skill required like a huge skill required here unless like you have a good DBA and maintaining that and uh, you just have to uh, uh, invest in that database systems right and coming to OLAP system, there here comes, uh, uh, as we mentioned, the business KPIs. So you want to 
uh, analyze the data for, uh, based on the, uh, certain KPIs and you need to get a business deep insights based on these KPIs right for these KPIs basically and uh, business reports and ad hoc reports you want to generate uh, like finance reports sales report marketing reports so all kind of reports uh, uh, we can generate based on that uh, data which is in there in OLAP and data integrity is not so important here data integrity in the sense like uh, uh, read and write here we are performing right here uh, we don't care about that because here we are using the data for the analysis purpose and uh, volume of data is very high in case of here because uh, we, we can store uh, the entire history of data here like 10 years 20 years of data as well unlike uh, OLTP systems and this is uh, sh short term futuristic decision making uh, if you want to do so then uh, basically we uh, refer this KPIs we get this deep insights and uh, based on that we can uh, I mean fine-tune our process uh, the manufacturing process uh, sales uh, strategies marketing strategies so it may be short-term or futuristic decisions so those KPIs will answer us uh, to take these decisions and uh, so this also acts as a central repository for organization data because uh, as we seen in the uh, in the previous slide like this right so we are getting the different uh, data from different OLTP system say this is a project one this is project two project three we are getting data from all the project into a central repository here so this, this OLAP can act as a central repository for your organization or uh, maybe department also right and uh, so it is of like a comparatively a high investment compared to the OLTP, OLTP uh, systems because here you need to have a data warehouse which is a little more costlier than database and also you might need a data lake or a data scientist uh, okay and also data engineers uh, uh, to actually maintain this okay and also you need a uh, like business side definitely you need a data analyst data modeling so those kind of things will come into picture here in case of OLAP where uh, you need to invest for a particular skills skill set here more than uh, OLTP systems okay you are investing for the infrastructure also and uh, skill also here but uh, so you understood right so here this is for a completely different purpose OLTP systems and OLAP are definitely for a completely different purpose hope this was useful thanks for watching